Greetings, my fellow wargamers. It's time for another hobby update from me. First, I would like to say that I'm going to change the way I work. I'm not going to concentrate on just one project at a time anymore. Previously, I got committed to a very long project. I'm talking about the Ice Golem tutorials. But the 20 episodes with virtually nothing in between got kind of tedious, especially in the end. Instead, I'm going to work on several different projects at once. The first things I am going to do are going to be this female fire starter. That base is halfway done, by the way. There's still quite a bit of work on this side and there'll be lots of pipes sticking out. But uh, that's well on the way. Part 1 of the sculpting tutorial is already recorded. And uh, also... I already done the base for the second Twilight Night. That's two more sculpting tutorial waiting to be uploaded. That's what I'm going to be doing first. Uh, this project, which quite a few people been eagerly awaiting, has got slightly delayed. I'm designing a full body tattoo for him. But the design is still not simplified enough to fit onto this back. So I'm going to have to simplify it a bit more, otherwise it's just unrealistic. Um, but uh, this is my next priority after those two miniatures and this will be done. I also have another two really big projects in the pipeline. I didn't really expect to start another big project so soon after finishing the Ice Golem. But after seeing what a weird forum member, Grey Cardinals Workshop, did with the miniature called Brutal Emissary, I too got compelled to produce something big and unique, something nobody else has. A big conversion with resculpting. The two possible candidates for this are this Amanozako. Uh, as you see, this was actually a really old project I started years ago, in fact, but this was frozen because I thought my skill level at the time wasn't enough to pull it off. What I was planning is um, Amanozako works really well with Hamlin, but it looks very Japanese and will look out of place in his warband. So, I wanted to convert it to make it look more European. Um, she would actually have legs and a completely different head and face. Um, she's uh, standing much more straight than the original because I cut off a chunk in here and attached this at the wrong angle. And, uh, this is attached at a different angle as well, so that's one of the things I could possibly do. Also, you noticed this thing. <laughs> Apologies if there's any people who are scared of spiders watching, but um, this is D&D Nolz's Marvelous Miniature Face Spider. I only bought it for conversion. This is going to be uh, Joro Gumo for Malifaux, because uh, what we had produced was more like just spider monster. I don't know why they called it Joro Gumo, because it should have been much more Japanese. And uh, that's what I'm going to be doing with this Spidey. Um, I have some bits from uh, Kingdom Death Lion armor kits, and uh, I will also sculpt uh, a kimono out of green stuff. This isn't the first time I'm uh, sculpting a kimono. I've done this before with these piece. But uh, this was years ago and I can probably do a better job now. Plus I will be using green stuff rather than millipad. 
also I will be getting Malifaux The Queen Returns Tatiana crew starter set. For my channel's sake I need to start working on new things. And last but not least, I got a request from one of the viewers to produce a tutorial for doing press molds. I was actually planning to do one at some point, but um, I might as well do it sooner than later. I don't know if it's going to be just one off or possibly split into two episodes, because there's a lot to cover here. I will not just be talking how to make press molds, but also how to apply them. First, I would like to talk about the properties of putties I'm using. That's milliput, green stuff, and combination of the two. Then we're going to talk about the simplest kind of press mold. That's the texture press mold. Things like uh, brick patterns. Oh, and speaking of bricks, for the best result, you need to cut out some bricks and combine them with the textured area. I call it building with brick textures. You can also make textured tools which work like custom brushes in Photoshop. You use them to cover a large area with textured marks. It's good for doing things like fur or rough ground. Then we'll talk about press molding objects and what to do with them making multi-part molds, and I don't just mean the double-sided one. In fact, for that type of press mold, I prefer to mold two sides separately and then cut them out and glue them together. And then there's really advanced types of press molding, where you just press mold bits of different miniatures, then cut them out and combine them together like a jigsaw to make something else entirely. It's sort of like converting, only with press molded bits. We also talk about combining press molding with just sculpting. In fact, before the object you press molded cures, you can shape it further with tools. I think that's pretty much sums it up. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Feel free to ask questions, and I would be really grateful if you shared my videos on your social networks. That would help me out a lot. See you soon!